right guys welcome back it's Nate Rio here and I want to show you your bonus video so this video is going to be about an hour and 15 minutes long and I want to do this quick intro for you to explain the three ways to make more money with your business now this is going to be really important especially if you've done anything with online marketing and affiliate marketing these are some of the mistakes that I made which was why my business never took off because I was never profitable so there's actually three ways to make more money with your business and it's going to be one to get more customers number two it's to increase the purchase frequency so with the existing customers that you have to make sure that they're buying more frequently which usually means more products things of that nature or the third thing is increase the average transaction size now here's the crazy part when you ask most business owners and entrepreneurs you know what's a way to make more money with their business the thing that they always talk about is more customers you know they go to SEO they do you know web they do marketing they do direct mail they do all these different advertising methods because they're trying to get more customers so for instance if you have let's say a restaurant and you're, you have a deli or something like that what you're gonna try to do is you already have your menu set you already sell all of your products but you want to try to go get more customers okay now here's the weird thing this is actually the hardest thing to do because it costs the most money and it's not the quickest way to more results okay the actually the easiest way to make more way to make more money with your existing business is to increase your average transaction size that's why I have it circled down here so this is what we're gonna to want to focus on so for example let's use that same example let's say we have a deli um, you already have your existing customer base and there's probably a good chance they're raving fans of your deli maybe they come in once or twice a week what you can do is you want to get those existing customers that are already spending money with you to pay more okay so let's say you can offer um, you know a bigger uh, value meal or something like that where you're gonna give more value and those people that are already paying are gonna to want to spend more money with your business okay um, another thing that you can do is uh, increase your purchase frequency so depending on your business model this might be a viable option too but the point I want to make here is that you don't necessarily want to go for more customers right away because we got a lot more dollars which means it's gonna cost you a lot more money okay so instead what you want to focus on is increasing your average transaction size with your existing customers that's going to give you a lot more money in a lot quicker time with a lot less effort so that's it for the intro here so right after this video here and i'm done you're going to watch an hour-long video it's by matt lloyd who's going to talk about the art and the science and he's really going to break these three steps down a little more and then after that uh, as with the last video um, there's going to be a button that pops up below so go ahead and click that and when you want to get started you and i are going to work together we're going to put a business plan together so that you can start this and you can actually be profitable with your online business okay so go ahead and watch the video grab a pen and a paper take lots of notes and we'll see you after that. All right, take care. What I want to talk about now, um, let's start handing out some money because I, I didn't hand out any money at all. For $20, I told you about that triangle from Perry Marshall and there was traffic conversion and for $20, what was it? Who said economics? Yeah, can we get it? Economics, right? Economics. Which is? Okay. Economics, right? The numbers, right? The revenue has to exceed whatever the expenses are. Just go and see Brian. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we need to make sure that this business model or this conversion or, or this website that we are sending traffic to is a vending machine that is going to give us more back than we put in, right? Otherwise, we go broke. So it's very, very important. The numbers are very important. And your conversion, like the difference between maybe 3% and 4% of your leads buying, okay, the difference between 3% leads buying and 4% leads buying can be the difference between the vending machine downstairs that eats your money and the one upstairs that prints money, okay? Literally, that small. So this is what it all comes down to, the conversion model, the business model that you use. And that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about. Now, let's say I give you two options to make a million dollars. Okay, I say to you, I want you to go and make a million dollars and 
you've got two options. You can sell $10 ebooks or you can sell $10,000 coaching programs. How many $10 ebooks would you need to sell to get to a million dollars? 100,000, right? Which means you need to go and find 100,000 new customers. 100,000 new customers who want to buy that $10 ebook. Now, could you do that in this niche, in the internet marketing niche? Are there 100,000 people out there? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, you could do it. I have an ebook called I Am Revolution, which has sold maybe six, 8,000, somewhere around that. It's not a huge amount, but still, it's, it's a decent amount. But you could find 100,000 people, but that's a lot of people still. Now, on the other hand, if you're selling a $10,000 coaching program, how many people do you need to go and find? 100, right? What do you think is easier, getting 100 people or getting 100,000 people? Now, of course, selling to those 100 people, the $10,000 program, is it going to be harder to get a $10,000 sale than a $10 sale? Absolutely. But... The big question is, is it going to be proportionately harder to get that $10,000 sale? The $10,000 transaction or the $10,000 sale is a thousand times bigger than the $10 ebook. Is it a thousand times harder though to get that sale? It's not even close. What I'm trying to sell you on here is the idea of selling high ticket programs or what we call top tier, okay? Very few people do this online. You go to ClickBank or you go to the Warrior Forum, you go to these places and they're selling very cheap products. They're selling products from $10 to a few hundred dollars at most, okay? I see these products all the time for like $7. It's really, it's just, it's, it's a joke because you need to get so many new customers to make any significant money that it's, it's almost not even worth doing it. So early on, I caught on to this idea of, hey, what if instead of trying to get all of these customers, I just focused on getting a few customers, but I increased the transaction size. I focused on making bigger and bigger sales. And that changed everything. Your own high ticket offer transforms the economics of your business more than anything else. Having a high ticket back end offer that is a hundred times the price of your front end product changes everything. And don't confuse the two, okay? A front end product is not there to make money. A front end product is there to acquire a customer, okay? I have this little quote that I, I first heard from Dan Kennedy that I like. He says, the purpose of a customer is not to get a sale, but rather the purpose of a sale is to get a customer. That's like a writer down on. That's something you want to write down. Because that philosophy of, look, I'm not trying to make a sale here. I'm trying to get a customer that then I can follow up with to make the higher ticket repeat sales. That's, the, that's how you must do everything if you want to do well in this niche. That's how you must approach this. So your front end products, like I have front end products, like I am Revolution. It's a $10 ebook. Okay, who here has read I Am Revolution? Well, let me ask, who here has not read I Am Revolution? It's a 65-page ebook. Would you like a copy? All right, let's hand out a copy. Brian, uh, if you guys can hand those out. We brought along a stack of them. <laughs> Last year, we, we brought like 500 of them, and uh, we've had this big stack that we're, we're trying to hand out, so this is good. You're going to get a copy of this ebook, okay? And it's like 65 pages. Now, this ebook, I want you to don't read it now while I'm talking, but read it during lunch, okay? <laughs> read it during lunch um, and examine it because this is one of our main front end products. We've sold, like I said, thousands of these for 10 bucks each, okay? So we haven't made a whole lot of money, but we've got a lot of customers with this ebook. But that's the purpose of the ebook. It's not to make us money, it's to simply get us customers. Okay? I don't they're going out the back, so I guess they're downstairs, but they'll bring them up and you'll get the ebook. Now, that's a front end product. Now, on the other hand, I have my back end programs. A back end program might be my apprentice program. That's fifty thousand dollars. 
you see the difference between a $10 transaction and a $50,000 $50, transaction? How much bigger is a $50,000 transaction than a $10 transaction? $49,990. No, I mean, like, how many, how many times bigger is it? <laughs> How many, how many times bigger is it? It's like 5,000, yeah, it's like 5,000 times. But that's good. It's a lot, it's a lot, lot bigger. Now, for all of those thousands of customers that come in, only a few get to the back end and buy the $50,000 program. But that one, one single sale of the $50,000 program far exceeds all the revenue brought in from selling thousands of these I Am Revolution $10 ebooks. That's what I want you to get here. Transaction size has a big impact on the kind of numbers that you're doing in this business. Most people in internet marketing aren't thinking big enough in terms of transaction size. They're selling cheap little products and that's why their income is very limited. Of all the revenue that we bring in, a huge portion of it is from selling our high ticket programs in the back end, range from $10,000 and upwards. Okay, that's, that's what I want you to get. Now, you might be wondering, well, that's, that's great for you, Matt, but you know, what about me? What am I going to offer people that's going to be worth thousands of dollars? Well, here's, here's a few ideas where you can start, and then I'll, I'll give you another alternative too. You can be doing coaching programs, for example. Okay, you can be doing coaching programs where you help people one-on-one. -on -one. You might think, well, <clears throat> what do I know? You know, what do I know? I'm still new at this myself. I'm still learning this myself. Here's the deal. I mean, if you've been doing this for a few months and someone just got started yesterday, to them, you're an expert. To them, you know a lot. So, I mean, I had those kind of thoughts myself when I started doing coaching. I was like, well, who would want to learn from me? Like, what am I going to teach people? And it's really just... It's not so much about how much you know, it's really just about you getting comfortable in that role of teaching other people what you know and you getting comfortable with wearing that hat of being the expert, of being the coach, okay? Top tier business opportunities, I'll talk about that in just a moment. Done for you services, okay? So for example, we had a few programs we sold uh, about a month ago around $10,000 each. We sold about 10 of those. And what they were was a done-for-you service where I would co-create a webinar with someone to help them get more MOBE license right sales. Okay, MOBE license rights, that's our main program. That's a done-for-you service. So start thinking to yourself, what can I do that would help people? Um, what can I provide to people that would like, they'd be like, oh, great, I don't have to go and do that. I don't have to do all of that work. People love buying done-for-you. People don't want to do work, they just want the results. How do I just give someone the results? That's what they will pay big money for. Licensing other people's high ticket programs. That's also another shortcut. You don't have to go and create it. You have someone else's and you promote that instead. We'll talk about that in just a second. The first time I saw this, guys, l let me tell you this story. I got started, like I said, in 2008. It's October 2008. And I respond to this ad. I pay $2,000 to this guy who's in a top tier direct sales company. I pay $2,000 and I have no idea what I'm doing. Like literally no idea. I don't know anything about websites and it's all like I look at it and it just looks all really technical to me and it's very in intimidating. And I start trying to learn and, and figure this thing out. And then I learned that in this particular company, if you want to make the bigger commissions, they have two other levels, okay? And the commissions are much, much bigger. In fact, <coughs> I go to a conference in Sydney for this company. I still haven't made a sale at this point. And the founders are up there on stage and they're pitching these higher levels of this program. And everyone's coming up on stage saying, yes, I want on board. And there's like two or three people left in the audience at the end. And I was one of them. And I'm sitting there and I'm feeling this social pressure of everyone's up on stage and I'm like the, one of the few people out there in the audience. But I go home, I fly all the way back to Perth and I'm, I'm really thinking about, is this the right decision for me? And after a week of deciding, I think, well, look, I can either keep on going through life along this predetermined path 
graduate, get a job, get a mortgage and so on, or I can, I can have a go at being an entrepreneur. And the upside of being an entrepreneur was just infinite. And I thought, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the first in my family to actually go in and really try this. So I decide to invest. Now, what was happening around that time, early 2009? The economy was crashing, right? And the exchange rate between the US and Australia was really, really bad. So the investment was $25,000 US. Today, I would have to pay maybe 24000 Australian. But back then, with the economy, it actually worked out to be $38,000 Australian. So almost, almost double. So that pretty much wipes me out. <clears throat> but I invest in this company because I like the idea of making these big high-ticket commissions. Commissions were $1,000, $5,000, and $9,000. Big commissions. And it didn't quite work out how I thought it would. I didn't start making the millions right away that I thought. And I started doing what they told me to do. I started, you know, trying to get leads and then calling my leads back. And here I am, I'm like 22. I have very little real life experience. And I'm talking to people twice my age and I'm trying to tell them, hey, look, I've got this business and, you know, I haven't made any money yet, but it's got a lot of promise and it just wasn't, it wasn't working. No one was buying what I was selling. But I, like I said, I get my first sale after nine months of doing this for $1,000. And then something happens. Okay, I get my first sale, I get my second, I get my third at $1,000. I still haven't yet made those big commissions. But then one day I get this email. And this email, I blocked out the company name. But this is the exact email, and if you look closely, you can see the date. And the date is the 2nd of April, 2nd of April 2010. Okay, not that long ago. And this is telling me that one of the people in my organization have stepped up to the next level, and also to, there were actually two emails, to the second level as well, the, the third level as well. My commissions were 5000 and $9,000 US, which worked out to be a little bit over $15,000 Australian. Now, keep in mind, up until this point, I'd had a few little $1,000 commissions, but as soon as the money came in, it went back out, okay? It went back out as fast as it came in. So I was constantly on edge of like financial ruin up until this point. And then suddenly, one day, $15,000 is coming into the bank account. And I just, I, I, here's, here's the deal, guys. Since that date, we've made around $4 million in revenue. And we've had days where we do, I think our best day is about $80,000 in revenue, uh, which isn't typical. You know, that's launches and stuff like that. But nothing up until now comes close to that moment even like days where we've done over $50,000, nothing comes close to that because that was the first time that I actually saw, I knew it was possible, but I didn't know whether it was possible for me. And that's when I first saw, hey, this actually works. And guess what that did to my economics? Now that I had $15,000 come in, do you think I had some funds available to go and get more traffic, to go and get more leads? Suddenly that opens up a lot of different options. Now I had money available to scale. Do you see what this does? Do you see when, when you have sales that can bring in this kind of revenue, how that can change the entire economics of your business? What I'm telling you is that don't focus on just selling products in the few hundred dollars range. It's, it's all very well and good to sell those, but the big money that you're going to make in this industry is top tier, top tier direct sales selling high ticket programs. You will get a lot fewer sales, but they will be worth a lot more. Okay, and great, the eBooks have arrived. So let's hand out those I Am, I Am Revolution eBooks too. What, what are you guys, you're, you're all gonna get one. You'll all get one. We brought, like, we brought quite a few. Here's what I understood guys, people wanna buy, right? People wanna buy, people wanna spend big money. 
And this is what you have to understand in this niche. People, especially in this niche, internet marketing, people love to buy. They buy course after course after course. There's always going to be buyers and they will spend big money. But here's the thing, and this is, this is really important. Pay attention to this. In your business, there are three ways in which you can make more money. Okay, three ways. You can get more customers. Now, if we were to walk out these doors and walk along and find some little deli, and find some like brick and mortar business, most of those businesses, if you go to the business owner and you say, well, what's, how, how could you make a lot more money in your business? What are they going to say? They're going to say, get more customers. I need more customers. That is the first response for most business owners when you ask them that question, how to get more money. It's also the worst response. It's also the response that business owners who don't get it will give to you first. The best business people, they understand that there's actually two other ways to make more money in business that are much, much easier and much more profitable. One of them is to increase the frequency of purchase, okay, get people to buy more. So if you're at a deli, if you're selling whatever, Cokes, rather than getting more customers, get people to come back more and more. And for $20, what's, what's the third one? Someone yell it out. Who said more expensive items? Yes, yes. Increase, come, you can get $20. Increase the transaction size, right? The third one, increase average transaction size. Those are three things that you can do. All right, so three things that you can do. Get more customers, the most expensive one, because you have to pay to get new customers. You gotta pay for new traffic. Once they're on your email list though, they're there. It doesn't cost you that much to send an email. They're there. Okay? You can increase the frequency at which they buy. That's why if you're on my list, I keep on promoting offers to you, don't I? Okay? I want you to buy more. I want to help you in different ways. But I also have an ascension model. I also have higher ticket programs. They start at $10 and they go up to a few hundred, a few thousand, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. You see how that goes. Okay? There's an ascension model. For every 100 buyers that you get, you're going to find that maybe 5% will pay a lot more money than the rest. And you'll find that 1% will pay a ridiculous amount more than anyone else. That would even surprise you. I once saw someone on stage at, at one of my last events. I did an event called Add the Nitrous. One of the speakers was a lady called Lisa Sasevich, and that's what she does. She goes, she's into the speaking business and selling from stage. And she showed me a video of her selling a program for over $100,000. And that, that like blew my mind. I thought, people actually buy that. And I saw that, yes, she did several million dollars in a weekend. I want you to get this. I want you to get this, that people... There are people in your audience. If you have a list right now, if you have a list of 100 people or more, there are people on that list who will pay a lot more than you think. They want to buy. They want to buy that high ticket program that's going to provide that value. And you just need to decide, am I going to offer it to them? And if you do, it will transform the economics of your entire business. You'll go from having that vending machine that eats your money to having a vending machine that prints money. It's just that little percentage change. Gary Halbert. Who knows Gary Halbert? You've heard the name, right? Gary Halbert was pretty much like the best direct response marketer who ever lived. He died a few years ago. And he had this story, which I always liked, entertaining. He said, buyers are like porcupines in heat. You know, the, the female porcupine is only ready to mate like 10 hours or 12 hours in the entire year. It's a very small window for the male porcupine. A very small window. Buyers are like that. When a buyer is ready to buy, that is the best time to sell additional programs. That is the best time, okay? So when someone just buys your product and you wonder, okay, well, when do I offer the next product? The best time is right there on that point, right there at that point of sale. That's when you get the upsell. That's why when you go into McDonald's, they're going to upsell you. Would you like fries with that? 
that one simple little question is millions and millions and millions of dollars per year in additional revenue. The upsell, okay? That's how it is when you're selling anything in internet marketing. That's why if you buy a program of mine, yes, I will have upsells. And when you're selling programs on the internet, you want to have upsells too. That's when people, they want, they're ready to buy. You, you spend all of that time helping them get ready to buy. Now they're ready to buy. They're, they're in that zone. They're like the porcupine. They're ready. Now's the time, okay? So always remember that. Now, here's the big, like, realization I had. I used to think, well, isn't there, can you get to some point where you've offered too much, where you've sold them too much? The answer is no. There's people in this room, there's people on my list who've spent tens and tens of thousands of dollars with me and I make you additional offers, yet even though I do everything I can to sell my programs, you still go and buy from the competition, right? Think about that. Your ability to sell will never really exceed their ability to buy. People will always keep on buying, especially in this niche. Now, if they are going to be buying, you want them to be buying with you. That's why I'm saying have a high ticket, top tier offer on the back end, okay? Because they are going to be spending money. And don't, don't get me wrong, this isn't like, I'm not saying this is all about just selling and making money. Obviously, you have to be providing value. They will not come back to you and buy the second, third, fourth program from you if they don't get value from the first. But what I am saying is that it's right there and it's either you who's going to be making the sale or it's your competition. Okay, so here's an example, right? On one of our funnels where we sell the inner circle, for example, which is a newsletter, uh, a monthly newsletter, $97 per month, you can buy that and then as soon as you buy that, you're going to see an OTO. What's that stand for? One-time offer, upsell, okay? It's going to say this is your one-time offer to lock in this discounted rate, okay, for one year. It's a special offer. So we take a $97 per month sale and we now turn that into they've just paid $97 now they're going to pay another $291 and they get a bargain they get an entire year's worth for just like three extra months now we then offer the mob license rights program okay $2,400 on the payment plan then we might offer another course and then another and another. Do you see what I'm doing though? I might offer five different programs. Now, does anyone think that's too much? And it's okay if you do. Do you think that's too many upsells? Yeah, some people do. Some people do. They think, hey, that's, that's too much. Like if I buy a product, I just want to get the product. But there's other people who will buy a product who want more. I brought a product recently from these guys who... Uh, they charge $10,000 a day and they help you work on your pitch. Okay, they're very, very good at what they do. And I brought their product online recently for like $67, I don't know, one of their products. And I wanted to buy their coaching program. I wanted to buy like their back-end programs. They didn't have anything and it actually made me angry when I brought their product and then they didn't offer me anything else. Like there are people like me who will buy from you, who want to buy more from you. Okay, they want more. So you can't have any guilt. This idea of it's too much, that's not your decision. It's their decision. If they don't want it, it's quite simple. They'll scroll down to the bottom and they'll click on no thank you. Okay, but they'll have that choice. So you don't make that decision for them. You just put the offers in front of them and if they want to buy, you let them buy. And if you don't let them buy, if you don't make them the offer, you're doing them a disservice. Just as I had felt that this company had done me a disservice. I wanted to buy from them. I wanted to, I knew they were very good at what they did. All right, this is how I, I look at marketing. So here's an example, right? Um, this guy comes onto my list, six days on my list, and I get these email notifications when the orders come in. And I see this email notification come in at like, I don't know, 10.40 a.m. or something like that. He buys the inner circle. Two minutes later, I see another transaction come in for, for the one-year upgrade. One minute later, gets license rights, and so on and so forth. Over about 15 minutes, that $97 sale turns into almost $4,500. Now, 
that's a good vending machine. Do you see the difference? Right? That's the difference. Most people don't have all those back-end programs. People want to buy. This guy, I called this guy after he brought, because when people spend that kind of money, I, I usually will, will call them if they go through and they buy everything, and I'll call them and just make sure everything's like, you know, they, they know what they were getting and so on. And this guy was ecstatic. He was like, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm so glad I got those programs. So he was really happy about it. And the cool thing is, that actually was a lead brought in by one of our MOBE license rights partners. Okay, remember that program I told you before, the MOBE license rights program? So that partner who brought in that lead just made $2,500. Perfect. And that's what I love. I love when our partners get results, that they make money. Now, to do well when it comes to selling high ticket, the one skill that you must master is ascension. The best marketers in this niche are very good at ascension. That $10 ebook that you now hold in your hands, that is our front end program. That's how we get a customer. For the first time, they buy that ebook. The people who've spent almost $100,000 with me started off as $10 ebook buyers. That's where it all starts with that ebook. Okay? So now we acquire a customer, but now we must have them ascend through our program. Ascend up the ladder and invest in our additional programs. Again, they have to get value from that first transaction. Otherwise, they're not going to come back for more. This is how I've structured our business. My online business empire, this is the heart and center of it. This is our top tier organization. This is how it's structured. The first program we have is the Mobile License Rights program. This is our first system, okay? We have people in the system doing hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. It's a very good system. It pays you up to 90% on the front end. Now, if you want to take things further, there's the Titanium Mastermind, and then there's, above that, the Platinum Mastermind. But these three programs, this is our Ascension Ladder, okay? So when partners promote, this is really what they are promoting. So that's where it starts. Mobile License Rights Program, they get those four products, okay? They get access to them. They can sell them, keep 90% of the money. Then we have the Titanium Mastermind. We're doing the next one in Mexico, Cabo San Lucas. I just got back from there. I was there for about two weeks ago. And my job was to go and stay at these four different resorts, which they paid for. These resorts want us to bring our event there and try out all the activities like jet skis and cruises. You know, like I have, I have a tough job, but I, I did it. I was willing to do it for you guys. And I, I go and do these things. But that's what we're doing, and we're doing that in September, okay? So that's our Titanium Mastermind. Then we have our Platinum Mastermind. We just got done with the last one five weeks ago in Fiji. Like I said, about 100 people flew in from all over the world to attend the Platinum Mastermind, okay? And these are big Mastermind conferences, all expenses paid for two people. Now, the reason why I tell you that, I'm just showing you this is a top-tier direct sales business model. But you have a lot of choices in this industry. There are, we're not the only ones doing this, okay? There are other companies that also do top tier direct sales. And it's really, really important that you choose the right business model because even inside in one industry, there will be similar companies, but they will have big differences in the potential output. Let me tell you a little story. So I get here to this hotel a few days ago and I go for a walk. I want to find some restaurants because I know when you guys come, we, we're going to need to tell you where the restaurants are. And I, I end up like walking around the block and I end up in some ghetto. And then I like, I come back and I get lost. I don't find anywhere. And then I realize, oh, there's actually some restaurants across the road in the World Trade Center next door. And there's this place called Jersey Mike's. Now, who's heard of Jersey Mike's subs? All right, well, I hadn't heard of it, okay? Where I'm from, Australia, we don't have Jersey Mike's. But I tried it, and it was half decent. And I, I started thinking to myself, hmm, this is interesting. Well, this is obviously a franchise. And I, I'm standing there in line getting my, my sub from Jersey Mike's. And you can go down there for lunch if you want and see it. And I'm standing there, and I, I order this, this sub. And it's what they do is they have these big slabs of cheese, ham, all the meats. 
And as each person orders, they pick up this big heavy slab and they put it on this slicing machine and it cuts the thin slices and then they put it on the sub. And I'm in a big queue, so there's like eight people in front of me and I'm waiting and I notice that every time someone orders, they have to pick up this big slab of cheese or this big slab of ham or salami and they have to cut it. I think that adds like an extra 10 seconds to every order. It's not, it's not the most efficient way of doing it. This could be much more efficient. And I just start observing that because I start comparing that to another place that does subs that I know of. Okay. But anyway, I get back to my room and I, I do a little bit of research. If you want to buy a, uh, one of these franchises, it's like two hundred to four hundred thousand dollars. That's what you're looking at to buy a Jersey Mike's sub, uh, a sub place, and they're going to collect six point five percent of your revenue. So if you sell, I don't know, like a million dollars per year, they're going to take sixty-five grand as their royalty. Okay. There's five hundred and eighty-seven. Jersey Mike's subs around America, 587. This was started in 1956 by a guy who, when he was 14 years old, he goes and works for this sub place. Three years later, he's 17, they announce they're selling it. So together with his, uh, his football coach and I think his parents, somehow he raises $100,000 and he buys Jersey, or he calls it Jersey Mike's subs and it becomes his and he builds it from there. So it's been around for over 50 years, 587 stores in the States. Compare that to Subway. Subway started in 1965. Nine years later, there's almost 35,000 Subways. Right? That's a much bigger number. Not just like less than 600, but 35,000. There are more Subways than there are McDonald's. Okay, McDonald's makes a little bit more money, but there's actually, Subway is the most successful, uh, in terms of numbers, restaurant around. There's more Subways than any other restaurant around the world. This business started after. Now, they are both selling subs, right? What's the difference, though? If you go into a Subway, it is very efficient. You pick your bread and all the meats are there, the, the vegetables, everything. It's all sliced up, it's very efficient, and they can move people through it very quickly. Number one, it's a much more efficient system. Again, I want you to go down at lunch and actually observe this. You'll see it with Jersey Mike's. The other thing is the marketing around it. Jersey Mike's, do you think of Jersey Mike's as being healthy? Okay, is it healthy? Well, do they market it though as healthy? Big, they've got like big, like foot long you know, subs with meat and cheese. Now, Subway, on the other hand, Subway is pretty similar, really. I mean, they have their, their meatball footlong subs with cheese and everything on it. But somehow, they've turned it around and they said, hey, we, are a, we sell health. We'll help you lose weight. You eat our footlong subs of bread, <laughs> meat, cheese, and we're going we're gonna to help you be like Jared. And with the big genes and we'll help you lose all this weight. And it's genius marketing. It really is. But how, how, how different is that though? They're both in the same niche, selling similar products, yet one of them is, whatever it is, a hundred times bigger than the other. Now, I don't know how much money each is doing because they're private companies, but I mean, Subway, they, they would have to be doing pretty well. That's how it is in this industry. There's a lot of different companies in the top tier direct sales industry, but choosing the right vehicle is the difference between you owning a Subway or you owning Jersey Mike's. And I'm not criticizing Jersey Mike's, they, they must have done very well. 600, that's a big achievement, but it's a big difference between a Subway, right? Now, the problem with this industry, top tier direct sales, these companies that are selling high ticket conferences, it's the whole business model has, has been broken for the past few years. It hasn't been working that well. I got started in a company, I told you, in 2008. Guess where that company is now? It's out of business. It doesn't exist. They still owe me a $15,000 conference that I never got to go to. All right? And that, unfortunately, that's kind of the norm. See, what happens is, in this industry, the people who start these companies, here's what happens. 
they get some success, all right? They get some members involved and they're building their company. They start doing their first few million dollars per year and they become arrogant and they become complacent and they, they stop innovating. They stop thinking they have to get better and that's dangerous, okay? That's very dangerous. You never stop innovating in your business. That's why I'm always focused on what are we doing next? What's next? I never like to sit still in my own business. I'm always thinking what's next. The other thing with this business model is that, who, and let me ask you, who, who here has actually done like network marketing? Raise your hand if you've done network marketing. So about maybe 30% of you. Did you find that when you did network marketing at any time, did you build up a team of people but pretty much have them depending on you to do everything, right? Yeah, like a few of you are nodding up and down. Well, when I joined this top tier direct sales company, the same one that took me nine months to get that first sale, I finally did start getting my first few sales. So these people joined my team, my organization, as it was called. And... Because I was very new to the industry and very inexperienced, I got all the wrong people. I could tell you one story. Like I have like I had like the downline from hell. Like the worst <laughs> the worst one you can imagine. I have one lady who would call me like five times a day, even if it was midnight or one AM. Literally, and I, I would put up with it and like I didn't know any better. But that's the problem with this industry up until recently. Top tier direct sales, you go and sell these high ticket programs and you get people on your team, but you end up spending all of your time having to do everything for them, okay? Okay? You, spend up all, you, you end up spending all of your time managing this team and supporting this team rather than focusing on growing your own business. The other thing is it's kind of hard for someone who's brand new to break into the industry. It's like it was for me when I was brand new I didn't have any credibility. No one had ever heard of me. I'm a 22-year-old calling people twice my age and trying to sound like a, a business person who knows what they're doing. And it was really, really hard. And that's the problem. When you join these top-tier direct sales companies, a lot of them require that you turn yourself into the guru. Not everyone wants to do that. And the final problem is that Here's the deal, right? They start doing these conferences and the first few ones are great, but then they start, they start cutting corners. They start saying, oh, okay, we're not going to do that because it's too expensive. And it, the, the product value gets less and less. So you see a lot of these companies that come into this arena, top tier direct sales, and they start off really well, but they end up dying out. Until now, okay? Who's on my list here and has heard about this? My top tier business. All right. This to me is probably like the most exciting thing that we've done in the past few years. By the way, I'm not, I'm not pitching you on this. I'm not about to sell you on this. I'm just telling you this is what, is what is working for us right now and this is where it's headed. Basically, all of those problems in the industry of like you having to build large support teams and having to be the guru and you not knowing how to sell high ticket programs on the phone because you've never done it before. All of that is solved with this, with what we're putting together. This is a new marketing system that we've assembled and the purpose of this system is to help you get more mobile license rate sales, titanium sales and platinum sales, paying you $1,000, $3,000 and $5,000. Now here's the best part, you don't have to make those sales yourself. We have people calling back your leads making those sales for you. You know why they do that? Because they get paid a commission. If they don't get you results, they don't get results. Okay, so this is what, how we're attempting to fix top tier direct sales. Basically what happens is you go through 21 steps. Once you get accepted into the program, 21 steps that guide you through how to get started in top tier direct sales in the business. It also gives you this marketing system that you're going to be putting through. You're going to be putting your own leads through. They're going to be going through it. And every time that they invest in our three core programs, you are getting those commissions, $1,000, $3,000, and $5,000. Would anyone, does anyone want this for free? Would you like it for free? Seriously. All right, I'm going to give it to you later on today. 
okay? I will give this to you later on today. I'll tell you how you can get it. But what's it do? Basically, it's designed, like I said, it gets you more mobile license rate sales, titanium and platinum sales. It's got about 20 years of experience built into it from all the people that have helped assemble it. Okay, the people we have doing the strategy behind it on the phone, um, they've been doing this for a long, long time. And that's what they do. So as you put leads through this system, we're going to be making those sales for you. You don't have to do that yourself. That's what I really struggled with in the beginning. When I was that 22-year-old kid picking up the phone, calling back those leads and trying to sell them my top tier direct sales business opportunity, it didn't work because I didn't know what I was doing. Okay, This is what this solves. Leads, coaching, it's all in there. It shows you how to do it step by step. Okay, 21 steps, so that's what it will take you through. And each day... Rather than give you the whole 21 steps at once, which would overwhelm you, okay, that would be a lot of information, it's step by step. You can't get access to step two until you've done step one, okay? So now it's piece by piece, and it just reveals the information that you need to get to the next level. Every three steps, you have to reach out to your coach, your top-tier coach. Now, your top-tier coach, they are the person who's going to be getting you sales, they're the person who's going to be making you the $1,000, $3,000, and $5,000 commissions. Okay, so they are essentially working for you, but they're going to be guiding you through the process over the 21 steps. Now, when we first released this, and this was fairly recently, we were going to put a $5,000 tag on it, and we decided not to do that. I'll tell you why. I don't want to make money in this industry selling the tools to you and saying, hey, here's what it is. And here's what it costs. I would rather make my money in this industry getting a percentage of what you make. So in other words, if you don't make money, neither do I. And then that way you and I, we're on the same side of the table. We're both working towards the same goal. If you don't get results, then neither do I. So that's how we design this whole system. Now, putting that aside, guys, whether you do that or not, if you are going to go into top tier direct sales or try and create your own high ticket back end programs, you might be thinking like who has that kind of money laying around? Who has tens of thousands of dollars just laying around? Does anyone, do you guys think that? Like when you hear, hear me talking about $50,000 programs, do you have some doubt whether the, the market or the people on your list have that kind of money available? It's fair enough if you do, okay. Um, and I did too, but here's, here's my belief about funding and when it comes to finding the resources to invest in your high ticket programs. My belief is that anyone who wants to raise whatever it is, $25,000, dollars $40,000, if they want it badly enough, they will. Okay, they will. Here's an extreme example, and I don't like giving this example. It's not a very nice example, but I'll, I, I need to do it to make a point. Those of you who have, you have kids or you have loved ones, if their lives depended on you finding $40,000 in the next seven days, would you find $40,000? You would, right? So what's the difference between that situation and someone offering you a program for $40,000? The difference is the degree to which you want it, the desire to find the funding, that's all it is. So whenever you hear the line, I don't have enough money, whenever you hear that from a prospect or someone you're talking to, very rarely is that the true answer, okay? Because money is not something you either have or you don't have. Money is something that you can acquire, you can go and find if you really want to. If you want it badly enough, you will always find the money, okay? That's how you must think of this. If you're going to sell high ticket, you have to understand that the market, if they want to find the funding to buy your high ticket programs, they will go and find it. This was like a, a big moment for me when I realized this. I realized that, hey, if people want something badly enough, if I can provide enough value to someone, if I can provide something that's going to offer that kind of change at such a high level, then they will always go and find the funding. And I've seen people who are almost like dead broke somehow come up with $20,000 in a week because they wanted something badly enough, okay? So 
top tier direct sales, this underlies it, okay? And I'm not saying that you, you sell to people who have to go and like, you know, refinance their homes and everything like that. But what I, what I am saying is that this must underlie your belief in marketing, that if people want something badly enough, they will find the funding. Mediocre marketers accept that excuse, I don't have the money. The best marketers don't accept it. They think, all right, that means my marketing is not good enough, okay? So you, really you have two options at this point. I mean, you can go and build out a back-end program yourself, your own top-tier direct sales organization, or you can use my top-tier business and it will do it all for you and we'll make those high-ticket sales for you. But either way, guys, the main lesson that I want you to get here before we go to lunch, and we're going to have a slightly early lunch today, the main lesson that I want you to get is that you need to be selling high-ticket programs on the back end of whatever you're doing. It will transform the entire economics of your business. It will give you um, the potential to have a lot more funding to go and get new leads. Okay? Again, it all comes down to that vending machine analogy. Our whole goal in this business is to create a vending machine where every time we put a dollar into it, we get back a dollar twenty. If you can do that, then it's wide open. Okay, that's how you're going to scale to the next level. So I finished up a little bit early. What I might do, guys, if you have any questions, let me know if anyone has any questions. Otherwise, we're going to go to a slightly early lunch. Does anyone have any questions about high ticket sales or how you can apply it in your own business? Anyone? Retail, what, what, what are you selling? Uh, right. I think the, the, best, the best niche that this works in, selling these high ticket programs, like ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, uh, niches where you, you are selling change, okay? Where you're selling change. For example, in the internet marketing area what, what are we selling really what, what are we selling here if you go and sell internet marketing what are you selling you're selling really what you're selling like people view themselves as where they are right now financially but everyone has this other version of themselves that they desire to be like okay they secretly wish they were like okay now most people who buy internet marketing products we all have this other version of ourselves that we would love to be like where we, we have money, where we have the freedom, where we can travel around, where we can take our family on holidays. We don't have to go to work every single day. That's what they're trying to get to. They're at point A, they want to get to point B. And what we sell is that. We're going to take you from point A to point B. When you sell life-changing um, programs that like literally will change your life, people will happily spend big money on that, thousands of dollars. I'll give you another example. Like, it's not just in this niche, it's in all the niches. Think about the dating niche. The dating niche is a relatively new niche. Does anyone know who David D'Angelo is? Evan Pagan? Okay, Evan Pagan, a guy who makes like $30 million per year selling info products. And he's got a pen name called da uh, David D'Angelo. Okay, so it's really, it's him, but it's a pen name. And David D'Angelo is this dating coach for guys to help them get more dates. $30 million per year. Now, he starts off by selling a program called Double Your Dating. Okay, it's like an e-book. But he has this whole funnel that goes right to the back end where he's selling $10,000 conferences. Now, why do you think people invest that kind of money at $10,000? Right, it's because that market, guys who want to get good with dates, they see themselves where they are now, struggling with the opposite sex, and their desire, their other version of themselves is like James Bond. They, they secretly like want to be like James Bond. They want to live that life. That's what they're trying to get to. So they're at point A. They want to get to point B. They will pay big money to get to point B because they go to bed at night, they go to sleep at night, and this is what keeps them awake at night. Like, the frustration of not being where they want to be. Could be the, the weight loss niche, okay? Someone's been struggling with their weight all their life and they have this, they have this like, they would love to just be able to lose the weight. They would love to look like 
that model. They, they have this other version on themselves. They will pay big money if you can take them from point A to point B. Now, I don't know if that answers your question, but all, all of these kind of niches where you're selling growth, where, where, where you're selling, I'm going to take you from point A to point B, people will spend big money because this is like what, what affects our happiness, our state of being more than anything else. If people are unsatisfied with where they are at point A and they want to get to point B, they're constantly thinking about it all day long. They will pay big money if you can show them the way to get to point B. So maybe not so much retail products, but where you're selling growth, um, they will. Now, you've got to make sure that you can actually deliver the goods. Okay, If you're going to sell someone a $10,000 program on how to get to wherever they want to get to, You've got to make sure you can do that, okay? But very often, here's the thing. It's more about you just being there to provide accountability. That's often what, is, what will get them from point A to point B, keeping them accountable. So that's how it is. Question? Yes. The public speaking <coughs> arena, the personal development, the personal growth area, the change that you're referring to, that industry's altered quite a bit from the days when the Tony Robbins and the Mark Victor Hansons and Robert Allens and all of these different people were making million-dollar weekends selling change and upselling like that. So how do you look at this in terms of positioning relative to the decline in that market and why this could potentially be successful? Or is this just a different version of that? Can you just kind of speak to the numbers and the trending with the, the, the jading that a lot of people have right. with spending money and the access to information through the internet? So I, I, I can know like Tony Robbins and those guys were doing really, really big numbers. And from what you're saying, it sounds like you're, you're saying that that's not happening so much anymore, not as much as it used to. Um, I, I don't know if that's really the case, though. I mean, like, people like the example I gave, Lisa Sasevich, I know she did, like, $3 million from a weekend with 200 people at her seminar. Um, there, still are, there still is big money being made in that industry by speakers. If you are selling to that industry, what I would sell is, again, point A to point B. I'm going to help you become the speaker that you want to become. For example, that, that example I gave you where... I brought uh, that $69 product and I got angry because they didn't upsell me. That was a company called Speaking Empire, right? And there's like two guys who run that company and they are the best stage closers in the world. Like they are really, really good. They've sold millions and millions of dollars. And they have something called a power day. It's $10,000. And I was actually going to go and do it while I was over here in the States, but I, the dates didn't work out. But they sell a $10,000 day where you come to their office and they will help you craft uh, a pitch that you can go around and speak at events and do this pitch and make a lot of money with. That's what they sell. So if you're asking me what could you do for a you know, high ticket back end in that arena, in the speaking arena, that's what I would be doing. I would be selling something like that. A consulting day where you charge those kind of prices and you promise that okay, I'm going to help mold you into the speaker that you want to be. Here's the deal, though, and this is really important. When it comes to selling high-ticket programs, one of the biggest factors in how much money you can charge is how much money is it worth to them, okay? So, for example, if I go to a store that is selling $2 products and I say, I'm going to show you how to, uh, you know, get upsells on each order and increase your, your upsells by like 50%, they're going to look at that and they're going to think, well, you know, I'm doing so many sales per day, that's, that's like an extra few thousand dollars per day at most, big deal. But if I take that same course to a plastic surgeon who's charging $30,000 per case and I say, I'm going to show you how to upsell, okay, this surgery and add on something else, that, that transaction size for the plastic surgeon, that's maybe an extra $10,000 per case. That information is worth a lot more. So again, it all comes back to the who rather than the what, the end audience, who are you selling to? 
if you are selling to public speakers, I would sell to the ones who it's going to be worth the most to. So for example, people who public speak and they sell from stage, if you teach them how to increase their sales by 10% and they're doing $50,000 per seminar, which a lot are, I mean, if they're half decent, they will, that's an extra $5,000 to them, okay? But if you go to another part of that industry, public speaking, you say, I'm going to help you be a much more effective communicator. What, what does that actually mean, though? Does that, does that translate? What does that translate to in extra dollars? Okay, see how it's a little bit blurry now? All right, so again, it's really about who you're targeting. What's that information worth to them? If it's worth enough, they will pay big money. So I don't, I don't know how well I answered that, but yep. Right. Well, so you've got business to business where it does, it does impact their dollar line and you can make the case, hey, I'm going to show you this information and here's what it's going to do for your bottom line. It's going to make you an extra $100,000 this year. Therefore, you should give me $20,000 for this information. And they're like, okay, I can see that argument. But then you have cases like you just said, where it's not so clear, there's not dollars and cents. So it could be a mother having uh, a better relationship with her kids. That doesn't translate into dollars. And you might think, well, how do you do that then? Is it harder to do that? How do we do that? And actually, people will pay very big money for that. I gave the example of the dating niche. The dating niche doesn't, doesn't translate into dollars and cents. But I'll tell you, people spend big, big, big money in that niche. Yeah, like rich guys in their 20s who can't get dates paying $30,000 to pick up artists because they're just that, they're frustrated. They've got all this money, but they're frustrated, right? In any, in any kind of niche, if they, if they want it, if it's like keeping them awake at night, if they're frustrated with it, they will pay big money for it. It could be any niche. So I, what, whatever niche you're in, if, if they are actually like frustrated with it, then they will pay big money for it. It doesn't have to be just business to business. Thank yep. You. Sure. You know, I, I don't really try and target any age because I have, it's funny, like the Fiji conference we did, Platinum Mastermind, that's a big investment, thousands and thousands of dollars. We had people younger than myself, young 20s, right up to a guy who was born in 1930. <laughs> like we, we have people like from all the uh, age spec the spectrum. So I don't, I don't really target baby boomers or anything like that. I don't target based on age, sex or anything like that. I, what I'm targeting really is where they are in their mind, okay? Um, if they're frustrated with their job or they're frustrated with the lack of internet marketing success that they're having, um, that's, that's who I'm targeting. Now, obviously, yes, I do want them to have some funding available, but I, I don't really put a whole lot of thought into just going after baby boomers. Now, having said that, there's definitely like a lot of targeting options you can do online. Like, I mean, if you wanted to go and do some Facebook pay-per-click ads, you can target people based on age. And that would be, that would be like a, a useful experiment to do, targeting people from, you know, 45 to 70 and comparing that to 25 to 35. But I honestly, I haven't done it though. You might try it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> help us find a healthy audience who's going to provide us with uh, a portfolio of products that we can all sell. Mm -hmm. I'm on a number of different lists, and I get uh, emails and offers from a dozen or more different licensed service products. Mm -hmm.
You mean if you're all sending the same product to the same audience? Yeah, I, I used to wonder about that myself. That company that I joined for $2,000 in 2008, at the time it was just taking off in Australia and the guy who brought me in had that big month, 250K. And I asked the question, I said, well, how many people are there in this company in Australia? Will this ever get saturated? And I said, well, right now there's about 500 people and I started to get concerned. That's how I used to think. Now that I've been around this industry for a lot longer, that's not even like skimming the surface of what is this niche. This niche is tens of millions of people. It's massive. It is that big that the idea of you ever saturating the market or using up all the customers is not even something you need to concern yourself about. But here's what I do anyway. I keep on coming up with new offers. Right now we're up to about 37 different products that I've created and I keep on creating more. Those people in the mobile license rights program, they will always have more products that we create that they will sell. It will never get to the point where we've sold, we only have so many products and everyone who wants to buy them has brought them. It's always going to be more people, but there will also be more products. Okay, but just just trust me on that. That like this this isn't even touching the surface. I mean, it's it's a massive massive niche, a multi billion dollar niche. We're doing millions of dollars, but millions of dollars as opposed to billions of dollars is like a drop in the ocean. It's tiny compared to what's potentially there. Right. So, like, what about on the qualifying back end? So, let's say I have 55 people and I have, you know, let's say I've got your number. And in that case, do you have to worry about qualifying them? Like, are these people just people who are already interested in the new fabrication? Yeah. You just have to have a certain number of people. So, what you do, you, you, you just said you had, what, 2,500? Yeah. Right. So, what I do, I look at my list. There's, like, maybe over 100,000 people on that list. Now, that's a lot more than is actually really paying attention. Most of them aren't even opening my emails, truth be told. What I want to do, for me to find the $10,000 buyers on that list, imagine like a crowd of 100,000 people, massive stadium. We want to find the few people in that crowd who are willing to pay $2,000, $10,000, $50,000. What we need to do, rather than pitching that whole crowd over and over and over and saying, hey, buy my $10,000 program, over and over, which is going to burn out that list, it's going to tire that audience and make them very unresponsive. What we want to do is we want to get them to put up their hand and then isolate them. So like five people, put up your hand right now. Some people just, all right, that's enough. All right, le leave your hands up. All right, so say you guys are my list. I send out an email to all of you and I say, hey, look, I'm doing this new business model and it's working really well. I just had a $4,000 day and it's working very well, what I want to do is I want to turn this into a product, but before I do that, I want to take a few people through it first, get some testimonials, and then I'll launch this to the rest of my list. Who would be interested? If you're interested, reply back to this email. Now, those of you with your hands up, leave your hands up. So you guys, put, put your hands up high. Yep, good. All right, so there's about 100 people in this room. Now, maybe 10 of you, reply back to that email and you say, hey, Matt, I'm interested. So now what I do is I take you 10 people and I isolate you and then I start talking to you 10 people only and the other 90, I keep on going with whatever I'm doing, my regular marketing. But now you 10 people, now I talk to you more intensely about this high ticket program. So I might follow up with you one-on-one -on, -one on the phone or I might bring those 10 people onto a private webinar okay, and sell to you that way. So what you need to do for those 2,500 people is you need to get the ones who would be open to investing that kind of money in your life-changing program, you need to get them to raise their hand, okay? You just need to get them to, you need to have a response mechanism, say, reply back to this email if you're interested or fill out this form if you're interested. Isolate them, then follow up one-on-one. -on -one. To sell high ticket, when you start selling programs for $10,000 and above, you're not going to do that with a sales letter online. Very, very rarely. I mean, it could be done, but that's going to be hard. I can sell I Am Revolution eBooks for $10 all day long with a one-page sales letter. 
that's easy. Selling 50K programs, not a chance, okay, in this niche to a new buyer or to a new audience. You're not going to write a sales letter, show it to someone and then have them pay you 50 grand. To sell a 50K program, that's going to be a one-on-one -on -one offer. Like you're going to be either talking to them on the phone, in person, and that's going to be over a series of a few weeks or a few months. Okay, that one-on-one -on -one follow up, that's where you're going to get those higher ticket programs. Because for someone to invest that kind of money, they need to feel really confident that you can actually help them get to point B, what you're promising from point A to point B. And you just, you, you gotta make sure that you can do that. Uh, question? Yep. Yes, hi. First off, I just would like to take the opportunity to thank uh, Oscar here who introduces me to this uh, program sure. and thank yep. you for your time being here. Thank you. My question is, you mentioned that um, make sure to uh, pick a niche that has a um, potential of $100 million. How right. would you determine that and how would you, uh, uh, I guess would, I would say trust to make sure that whatever that company or the business is, is not just a, a balloon full of hot airs about mm -hmm. to pop any time. Yep. All right, so first of all, to answer the second part of it, if you are going to choose a top tier direct sales company and you wanna know, uh, are the people behind it just like you said, full of hot air? Meet them in person and just, you can usually tell. Look them in the eye and get a feel for what kind of person they are. Okay, that's the first thing. I see a lot of people in this industry, I mean, I've, I've been here for like five years. Um, most people are all right, but every so often you kind of meet someone and you kind of, you get a bad feeling, right? And you know, all right, stay away from that person. So. I think maybe just on intuition, that's how you're going to look at it. Just observe what they do. Maybe get on their list, observe what they do over time, and then if you feel comfortable. Your first question, uh, what was your first question? Just remind me again. Oh yeah, the million dollar potential of a niche. Yeah, so how do you find a niche that you know there's a million dollar potential? You do your market research. So for example, <coughs> any niche that has a following of repeat buyers. We want repeat buyers. We want people who buy over and over and over again to take them through our Ascension model from $10 up to our high ticket program. We want repeat buyers. Now, what is a repeat product that we all know? Magazine subscriptions, right? If there is a magazine being sold to a niche and people are buying it over and over, that's usually a good sign. For example, a gardening magazine or a hobby magazine, or a mixed martial arts magazine. There's magazines in all of these different niches. If there's a magazine and people, there's, there's obviously a, a market there to support that magazine and it's, it's showing up month after month, that's a good sign. And if you pick up that magazine and you open it and you see lots of advertisements from different business owners marketing to that crowd and you see them showing up month after month after month, usually that means they're making money. So that's usually a very good sign that there is potential there. Uh, you can go on Ab Amazon, amazon.com, and look in the magazine section, and you can see all the different magazines. So that's usually like a good sign. That's where I would start. Um, and here's another one. There's a, uh, a thing called Statistical Rate and Data Service, srds.com. And what they do is they rent you lists of buyers so for example, when I send out postcards around America, every month we'll send out 10, 20,000 little postcards to different addresses around America. We don't just blindly send them out to different addresses or we would go broke very fast. We rent a list of buyers, of people who brought similar products to what I'm selling and they brought those products recently, okay? Now, if you go to SRDS and you sign up, it's about $700 to get the online subscription or you can go to your local library and get it for free, okay? So you go to your local library and you can get it for free. You can look at all the different lists that are available and you will find there's every niche you can imagine, okay? And they might tell you that on this list we have 50,000 names and each name is a $50 buyer. So you do the math, you think, okay, 50,000 customers times $50, that means that this particular company renting 
me out there buyers list, they've made X amount of dollars. You start seeing a few companies like that, then obviously that's, you know, that's a million dollar niche. Okay. Uh, it's called srds.com, Standard Rate and Data Service. Yeah. And we'll take two more questions and then lunch. Yep. My products in this niche, so I struggled for a very long time to create a product because I thought, what value could I possibly provide? And I wasn't having a lot of results. But I had mastered a few skills, and one of the skills that I had mastered in my first few years was how to build a list. I built up a few thousand leads, which now isn't a lot, but back then that was like quite a, quite a few. And I knew how to write emails. I'd been writing emails to them each day or every second day, and I was half decent at it. I was getting little sales here and there. Now, for someone getting started online who's never done email marketing before, they don't even know what an email autoresponder is. I didn't know what an email autoresponder was for months. And are there people in this room? And be honest, you don't know what an email autoresponder is. Okay, well, most of you do. But if someone's brand new to internet marketing, they, don't, they haven't learned that yet. And I thought to myself, well, you know, I, I wish when I got started, someone had shown me what's an email autoresponder, how do you set it up? Now I know how to do that, so now I'm going to create a course around that. And I called it My Email Marketing Empire. And what I did is I said, here's the course. I'm going to do a live coaching program. I sent this out to my list. And here's what it's going to cost, $97 or something like that, $200, whatever it was. And here's where you can buy it. And they brought it. And then I thought, wow, geez, now I actually better deliver this thing because people have actually paid me for it. And I said, okay, well, we're going to start session one on Monday. Here's the link. And I sent them a webinar link for 9 p.m. that night. So I get into the office that morning and I'm like panicking a bit. I'm thinking, what am I going to do? Like I, now I have to create this content. And so I spend all day creating module one, deliver it that night. Nervous, but I, I deliver it and I record it with Camtasia. Now I have my first video, module one. And then I do module two on Tuesday the next day, module three on Wednesday. And that was a very stressful week and a half. But at the end, now I had my first course. And then I go and get the graphics made and pay a copywriter to write a sales letter. So that's, that's what I did to create my very first product. And as I got... As I learn different things in internet marketing that I can share with other people to teach them, to help them get from, from point A to point B faster, then I create a product around it. For example, now I've done maybe five, six events. My first event was about this time last year. And I was like, that was probably the most stressful weekend of my life because I had no idea what I was doing. Now, I imagine there, there are people in this audience who possibly might like to do an event, but they haven't done one yet. So now if I wanted to, I could create a product around how to do events. And I could tell people all the mistakes to avoid, to avoid getting ripped off by hotels and everything like that. So as, as you build up these different skills and you learn this knowledge, you can package that information and that becomes your product.